everyone it's your girl lady naomi i'm here to do this week's housewives of atlanta review it was a lot of backstabbing and friendship betrayal on this episode let's get started Portia let her sister come moving in with her. I guess her sister was going through some problems with her baby daddy, whatever. Well, she got that big ass house. I don't understand why Portia needs that big ass house, guys. You know, she she keep buying these big ass houses and moving in for moving in them for a year and then moving out. What do you need a big ass house like that, five six bedroom house, if you live alone? I don't understand it, guys. Would you buy a big ass house like that if you live alone? <laughs> I just don't understand. I will get me like a three bedroom condo, nice condo, with, with you know, with the doorman or a, a penthouse or something like that. What do you need with a, a a big ass house like that? You live alone. I just think that's weird. But yes, her sister's living, I guess, living down the hall from her and her nephew or niece, whatever. I think it's a nephew. Yes, is is moving in with them. I just guys, let's talk about that down a little below. What do you think about that big house she got to herself? So Cynthia goes on a date. Cynthia's back at the dating scene now. I must say, Cynthia is, is a pretty pony, isn't she? She's so beautiful. I love Cynthia. Beautiful. You look at her, she's she's so beautiful. So she walks in on this place. She thinks she's in the wrong place. There's farm animals roaming about. It's chickens roaming about, guys. <laughs> she's looking around like, where the fuck am I? Okay? So she runs, she walks in there, and she calls the guy, says, I think I'm in the wrong place. What address you gave me again? And he was like, no, you're in the right place. Come to find out, this guy, Cynthia just turned 50. Come to find out, this guy is only like 28 or 29, okay? And the guy was weird. He was kind of cute, but the guy was weird. You hear me? Weird. He had her take a photo shoot. Now, he didn't ask her to take a photo shoot. He made her do a photo shoot with him. Okay, he had all these barn animals and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, roaming about, honey, while they were eating and stuff. Then they, you know, he set up a nice little room. I think his office to eat and stuff like that. He seems like a nice guy, but he was weird as fuck. He was weird as hell, honey. Okay, I don't know, Cynthia. So Cynthia said, Cynthia was thinking what I was thinking. We just gonna be friends, honey. They, they, I guess they just became good, real good friends. But honey, she pegged that one right because he was weird as hell. Now, Sheree went to go see a life coach. His name just happened to be Jack Daniels, okay? And Sheree opens up. You know what, guys? I'm starting to really like Sheree. I thought Sheree in, in other seasons was, was a gossip or a trouble, but you can't tell Sheree any secrets, though, because she will go tell the person, though. Sidebar to that. She, can, you can't, she can't be trusted with a secret now. But I'm really starting to like Sheree, and I understand where a lot of her pain and why she comes across as an evil kind of person sometimes on the show, because she has a lot of pain kind of like Kenya Moore and that's why her her and Kenya went at it Sophia's last season because her and Kenya Moore a lot of like um um she's just not Sheree's just not as delusional sometimes as Kenya is okay but she let it out why she why she is the way she is and why she's so mean sometimes she's not I won't say bitter but she has a lot a lot of pent-up frustration and stress about her ex-husband now last last season they let us peer into the reality of what happened in the marriage, they were thinking about getting back together, they were starting the dating all over again. He was very a, a physically, a mentally um, abusive spouse he was to her. He said he choked her out, and oh, I, that means I didn't choke you hard. Um, she, he said, did you die? She was like, no, well that means I didn't choke you hard enough. Stuff like that, like who says that to a woman? You this 300, almost 350 pound, like 300 pound football, ex-football player, and you're choking this little 120, 140 pound girl out like that. And this is supposed to be your wife? Baby. Girl, she should have had his ass in cars. I would have had him locked up under the jail, honey, in seven dimensions under the jail, baby. He wouldn't have seen a lot of date for the rest of his life if he put his hands on me. And so it, it appeared into he was so abusive to Sheree in the marriage. It really let us peer into a little bit of her inner, her inner demons. I talked about that in an episode before, guys. I've been through that. I've been in a, a mentally abusive relationship where a man cheated on me mentally, mentally, mentally got in my head, made me feel like I wasn't pretty enough. So I understand how that feels, guys. I understand. And I'm glad that um she let us peer into 
how she really how was really going on in herself it helps you learn the characters more and why they are the way they are guys okay you can't judge somebody so much sometimes you have to understand why a person is the way they are okay i love her for that and she was basically trying to um talk about how she she wants to tell it to her kids she, her kids are old enough i think her daughter's like 18 and her son is like 21 or 22 he's a male model he's kind of cute too guys so she wants to sit down and talk to him. I think they already kind of know, but she wants them to hear it out of her own mouth, okay? Miss Cynthia and Kenya goes to a park. Um, Cynthia had a beautiful, floral, flowery gown on. She is so beautiful, guys. And they were walking in a park with a little basket. They had a little park in the basket with the dogs. And Kenya was talking to Cynthia about how her husband is taking it. He's not taking it very well because he realized she was famous and things, but he didn't realize the paparazzi and when he walked on the street, people were gonna be trying to figure out who he is. People are gonna be jumping out of bushes on him. You know, everywhere he goes, he's gonna be photographed because she is a celebrity. If guys wanna, guys, if people, if you guys want to say it or not, since uh, she is a celebrity, Kenya is a celebrity, guys. So um, for a season, she's been trying to get married. So she finally found someone to marry her. I'm not trying to say she sounds desperate because she's a very pretty woman. I'm sure she can have any man on this planet. Let's be real. Okay, y'all can, can read her, shade her down. Shade her to the fifth dimension, honey. But that's a pretty bitch, okay? She wasn't Miss USA or Miss America, whatever one she was. She wasn't it for she wasn't for a reason, okay? Let's be real. So um she she was talking to her she was talking to her about that. And um she's kind of taking it hard because, because her husband's taking it hard, guys. You know what I mean? So Shamia meets Candy and Sheree in the African store. Shamia, um, I guess it's getting married in Africa and they were looking at African, gar Afri African garments and African, you know, culture stuff. Um, they're in the store trying on things, trying on different things in the store. They, I, I love African garb, guys. My boyfriend is Muslim and, um, he's not Muslim from, you know, one of those other countries, but he's a, a black African American Muslim. He's Americanized Muslim, I should say. And I love to see the different outfits and stuff like that, that people wear at different events and stuff like that. So I think it's cute. And I think they all looked really, really cute in their African garbs. So Portia's thrown away all her meat and her freezer now. She's supposed to be going vegan. Let's see how long that lasts, guys. I don't know if I don't know if I can go uh, 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 meat free. I don't know if I could do it. Now I've seen the way they kill kill animals. They basically butcher them alive and they basically grind cows alive. It's very very upsetting to watch. And I love animals. I'm you know I I just don't know if I can go totally go meat free. Let's see, guys. I don't know. What y'all think? Now Kenya's on the phone with her her good Judy, um, Brandon. Um, Miss Brandon, honey, and talking about how her boyfriend, once again, people, his ex-girlfriends are calling his mother, I guess they were really close to her mother, talking about Kenya, Kenya passed, Kenya passed 25 years ago and things, okay? And, you know, trying to hate on Kenya and stuff like that, because he is a really cute guy. Now, I seen some pictures of, about him online, uh, of him online. He is a really cute guy and things. Okay. So, um, so she breaks down to Brandon and then the producers walk in because I guess they're supposed to be filming with Kenya that day and she also talks to the producers about it one of the female producers about it they're just hating guys I hope she she needs to be a little more stronger she needs to be strong for him and she's saying she don't want a divorce um, because she feels I guess she feels like this may be too, a little too much stress on him and because um, you know when men are stressed out you see a different side of them guys so I hope I hope that all is well in, in, in Kenya Moore's life, marriage and things like that. Because, you know, I don't want them to get a divorce and stuff like that. She's been wanting this for a long time, guys. You know what I mean? So, Sheree meets three of her friends, or three of her friends meet Sheree at, at Candy's house to do a mock role play of how she's going to tell her kids about what her husband did to her after she went to uh, Life Post Jack, Jack Daniels. And talked about, you know, and, you know, he gave her coping mechanisms and things like that to what to say and how to bring it up to her kids about, you know, what happened to her in her marriage. So they did the role playing. I think I think Sheree did a very, very good job and stuff like that. I think people are just a little more a little shocked because, you know, when people are in bad relationships and bad marriages, 
you know, sometimes they get Stockholm Syndrome. You know, they love the person and they don't want everybody to know what they're truly going through in their marriage and things sometimes, guys. You know what I mean? So when it all finally comes out, everybody's like, <gasps> everybody's clutching their damn pearls. Like, oh my God, she really went through that. I knew it was bad, but Jesus, I didn't realize it was that bad. So it was those type of teas. But I think she did an amazing job, guys. So Shamia has her bridal shower. I love her theme because that's something I would do. I would do a big bridal shower. Actually, I always said that about my wedding. I wanted every all my guests to come to my wedding, like one of those old Southern weddings with those big church hats. My mother used to have so many of them when I was growing up. So, I, you know, I love her theme. Everybody had to have like a nice church hat on and, and stuff like that. And Candy is sitting at the table with Portia. And Portia's talking to her sister. And... Candy feels very uncomfortable, and I can't blame her what she did last what she did last season. She, she gets up and leaves, like abruptly gets up and leaves. And then um Shamia finally gets here. She looks very nice. Her outfit was amazing. I thought she had like a light, a nice high-low train um with a little um short set on. It was it was all one like a one-piece number. And um she basically told um Portia told Shamia that she wasn't coming to her wedding in Africa. Now, this is supposed to be one of your best friends, guys. I understand. She's talking about first class is ten dollars an hour. Well, don't fly first class, Miss Thing. You don't have to fly, fly first class. Nobody said you fly. It ain't like you Beyonce or motherfucking Janet Jackson or something like that, where you got to char charter a private jet or you you that famous where people are gonna be harassing you. I'm not saying she ain't famous, but she ain't that famous, Miss Thing. And she getting a cute coin from Dish. I think don't she work for that show Dish, the real radio? She get a cute coin from there. She got a lot. She got a hairline and all this other. She got a weave line, a wig line. She got all these other stuff going on allegedly. She got all these things going on. You can afford a ten thousand dollar first class ticket if you choose to to go over there, Miss Thing. Okay, that's what she's she's poor. Portia is a hater in a, in, a, in a sense, okay? She's a hater. She's probably jealous of Shamia because she's married. Her marriage is working out. Her relationship is working out. She can't find, as pretty as she is, the prettiest Miss Portia is, she can't find a man to love her. Just because you got this, honey, and a nice body, sometimes people can see what lies beneath. Just because the outside is beautiful doesn't mean the inside ain't rotten, okay? Just because the outside is beautiful don't mean the inside is not rotten to the damn core. People see past that. The outside is just a veneer. That's what a lot of people don't realize. People fall in love with these pretty guys or these pretty women, but they're so evil and wicked on the inside. How is this supposed to be one of your best friends and y'all been friends for like so long and you ain't going to her wedding? I don't give a damn how much it costs, okay? I don't give a damn how much it costs. You make a cute coin. You riding around in that expensive ass car, that two hundred thousand dollar car, but you can't afford. You can't afford a ten thousand dollar plane ticket. You got a uh, a five or six bedroom house. I know it costs at least a half a million dollars, but you can't afford a ten thousand dollar plane ticket. Girl, bye. She talking about she got some some very technical word, low blood pressure when she when she flies and stuff like that. Girl, you travel all around meeting all these young ass thugs with bad teeth and bad hair all around the United States, honey, that you be having on your shows, girl. Girl, you need to have several seats, Miss Portia. I was over her in that episode. Child. <laughs> Candy was at the other end of the table with, um, uh, we're talking, talking, talking crap about the mocking portion the whole time when she was talking to Shami about it, girl. Baby, I was cracking up. Then they play this game. Um, Sheree wins this game, basically getting the wiener in a cup. They cut a little hole in the cup and they dangle the wiener on a thing and put it in a hole. It was called wiener in a hole. So she won the title, biggest whore, or biggest hole, or something like that. It was a cute little game they played at the at the bridal shop. I thought. So anyway, it ends right. It ends. And Shamia and Portia get into a fierce fight outside. Now, that car that Portia got is cute, bitch. You seen those suicide doors, bitch? You seen that car door, how that that car door opened up, swung open like that? Like, I thought I was watching Night Rider, bitch, okay? <laughs> that car was cute, this thing. So, they get the argument and stuff like that. And Portia says she just don't care about the relationship. She don't care about the friendship anymore. Portia is very selfish and self-centered. And I realize if it ain't about her, she don't she don't care about you. If it ain't about her, she don't care about you. And that's not a good friend to have. That's not a friend, guys. That's an opportunist. That's the person that wants to be around you when it's convenient for themselves. I, I, I really, really don't like Portia now, guys. 
I mean, I'm not saying I don't have nothing against her, but I really don't like that because if you're someone's friend, you're someone's friend, and that's supposed to be one of your best friends. That they were best friends for a long time, and 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 that happens. Like, come on now, that's so fierce. And I'm I'm glad she me a check uh, Portia on that, y'all. I'm so happy she checked her on that because that shit was a mess. I'm happy she checked her. And then Sheree peeking around the corner the whole time. Like, ooh, child. I love for Sheree. I live for her because she is so messy sometimes. And she always in the tea. That bitch always got some tea for your motherfucking ass. All right, guys. I'll catch you guys next week. Like and share this review, okay? And subscribe to me on YouTube. I love everyone. Bye-bye.